Hey, welcome back everybody. You are at State of Charge, a YouTube channel where we talk about solar power, web technologies, and life stories. You are in part two of learning how to use LightSail for WordPress. Now you're gonna wanna go back and look at the first video because we talked about creating your account. We talked about installing WordPress on the instance. We talked about updating WordPress and the plugins and we got it all configured and ready to go for this part two video of WordPress and LightSail. And so without further ado, let's dive right in and look at some things like how to get rid of the Bitnami logo, how to install Let's Encrypt so your website is secure with SSL. Um, how are you going to use your key pairs to actually log in remotely to the server using SSH or SFTP with a, a console that you would have on your computer and some other things as far as like creating snapshots and how to do daily backups of those snapshots. So this we're going to get a little bit more technical, a little bit more nerdy, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's dive right in. Okay, so we have State of Charge, which is the instance that we got set up and running in the first video. And we can come over here and we can click on these three buttons right here. And this lets us do a number of things with that instance. Uh, managing it, stopping it, rebooting it, deleting and such. So let's go ahead and look at this. And once we click on manage, then we have our storage options, metrics, networking, which is where we would have signed the IP address, creating snapshots, etc. So what I'm going to do now is when you come to the website and you reload this and you're looking at this home page that we created in the first um, video, we have this bit NAMI logo down here in the bottom right. Now we are gonna wanna get rid of that. We don't want that to be on every instance um, of our page. So when we go to any page, whether it's a blog or any kind of page, that Bitnami logo is going to be there. So let's go back to our LightSail homepage and let's click on the console here um, where it's just gonna launch a new browser window and it's gonna pull up the console here that's directly to this instance. And right here is some text that we are going to highlight and just copy it to your clipboard. Come down here and just paste it in. And this is going to bring us to this Bitnami um, run commands that they call it. So we are going to remove the Bitnami banner. That is the first option there at the top. We're gonna to highlight it and just simply hit enter. It's going to take a, um, a minute or two to do that and it's already done. Down here in the bottom, you're gonna see press escape to go back. So let's just press the escape button and we're back to that Bitnami frequently run commands. So now assuming this worked, when I come back to my main browser window and we look at the blog and we reload it, this Bitnami logo is going to be gone. So let's reload this and there you have it it is gone. So that is no longer on your website. It's no longer going to be attributing this instance to Bitnami's um, instance that they have available for Amazon light sale. So pretty, pretty cool. So now the next thing that we're going to want to do once we do that is let's go ahead and set up Let's Encrypt. Now, before I did this, and before I got this video started, I've mapped a domain name to this IP address, which is this IP address right here. So you're just gonna wanna log into your registrar, you're gonna wanna go to your DNS zone, and you're gonna wanna point the A record of that domain to this IP address. That way if somebody goes to your domain or your subdomain, it's going to route and map it to this IP, which is this installed version of WordPress. So I have already done that. So um, that could be a whole other tutorial that we don't wanna get in the middle of right now. So I just have a subdomain mapped to this IP address and let's go ahead and set up Let's Encrypt. So I'm just gonna hit enter. It's gonna execute that. Now it's probably gonna ask you to do an update and that's fine. Just go ahead and agree to that update by capital, typing in capital Y and hit return. Okay, so the update here should have done uh, what it needed to do. Let's go ahead and hit let's set up let's encrypt and we should be good to go uh, to do this installation of the SSL so that it's good to go. So all I'm gonna do is 
type in the domain that I want and uh, I do not want to include any of these other things it may be specific to yours where you do want to set up www but in my case I do not because it's just going to be the subdomain hit enter to continue yes and I want to make sure that I am always redirecting HTTP traffic to HTTPS so this is going to be a capital Y in my instance and in my case do I agree to these terms? Yes, you can read through those and agree to them as you need. The next one's gonna ask me for my email address. We'll go ahead and put that in. Yes, I agree to the user and subscriber information and it is now installing the SSL on the server. It's going to renew this SSL every 90 days with Let's Encrypt. I'm gonna give it a moment here as it says it might take some time, so please be patient. All right, and as you can see in this instance right here, this was successful. We now have an SSL that has been assigned to this IP address with my subdomain, and so let's go ahead and try that out and see if it actually took place. So before I refresh, you'll notice up here that this IP address shows that it is not secure. So let's go ahead and type in the subdomain and let's view that and look at there it redirected to secure URL we have the lock with the subdomain so now we have the subdomain mapped to the IP address with the digital certificate so that all of the traffic to and from this website is now encrypted with let's encrypt so you have a secure URL that your users can feel safe visiting. So really, really simple, really, really straightforward to do. This is now gonna auto renew this SSL every 90 days. Okay, so now the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna use our key pair. Now, if you're familiar with FTP, in the past there was a username and a password, and you can even do that with SFTP, which is a more secure version of FTP using the SSH commands. Well, with LightCell, they've taken it even a step further where you have to actually download a key, which is an encrypted, um, basically just a text file that you're going to then use when you're FTPing into the server or you're going to be SSH into the server. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm only going to show you how this works with FTP, SFTP, and that PEM file. So let's go over here, let's come in here and let's manage. Let's go ahead and on your account page with your light cell, you're gonna be able to download the default PEM key that's going to be available for your account. Now this will work for all of your instances if you have multiple instances, or you can upload or create your own on a per instance basis. So however you want to manage that is on your own, but you would just simply download this PEM key and you would put it somewhere on your computer where you know where it's at, that you can easily access it. So as we know for this instance here, we are using this IP address. So I'm gonna just copy that to my clipboard and I'm going to use an application on the Mac called Transmit. I've already got this somewhat set up for us. I'm going to go ahead and edit this because remember when we when we made that static IP address, it changed. So I'm just going to paste that in. The username is gonna always be Bitnami and then the key that you just downloaded, you are going to attribute that key in this area here instead of a password. And you would just simply click this key right here, load in that PEM file. Again, it's just a text file. There's nothing crazy about it. You're just gonna store it in a place that you know on your computer, and then you're going to just link it to this. You're gonna go ahead and hit save, and let's go ahead and click and connect. And the very first time that you connect, it's just going to create a fingerprint that locks your computer to this key, and you're gonna be able to make a secure connection to that server. Once you're done, there, I'm now logged in using SFTP with the private key that is supplied by Amazon. So unless you have that private key 
you're not going to be able to log into this server. So just an added level of protection for you when you're wanting to do this. So now I can come in here and I can just right click this and I can open this um, file with whatever text editor that you want. In this case, I'm using Coda and I can come in here and this is just my config file for um, that particular instance. I can manage any of these files. Similarly, I could just log in and, and upload images, upload files, upload folders, just like I normally would with FTP. And so really, really easy, really, really straightforward. I know that when I first started doing this, I was very intimidated by the PEM files, but now that I've done it for a little while, I really appreciate the extra security and I appreciate how easy it actually is to do and I feel confident that things are secure. And the last thing that I wanna do in this version of the tutorial, in the next one, we're gonna go even a little bit more technical with some more command line stuff, but is snapshots and I am already on my console here for LightSail. Let's go into the three bullets, let's manage, and let's create and click on snapshots. Now snapshots is really, really nice. This is an actual picture, if you will, a snapshot of that entire instance that you can revert to at any point in time. Now this is a 20 gig snapshot, so when you create a snapshot for the first time, it might take five minutes or more to do. But let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and create snapshot, and I'm just going to call this state of charge, I'm gonna call it launch. Meaning that this is when I first launched the light, the light sale um, instance, and I already have WordPress updated, I already have the SSL installed, I already have the domain mapped to it, everything's been done. I'm gonna go ahead and create this snapshot. And again, it might take uh, five minutes or so. So for the sake of the video, we're gonna pause it now. We'll come back when the snapshot is completely done. All right, so after about five minutes or so, this snapshot is done. And uh, you can see here that it was June 7th at 4.21 p.m. And as I click on these three bullets, I have options that I can do with this snapshot. So now this is a picture of the snapshot at this particular point in time that I can come back to and use at any moment. Now, one thing that is very, very cool about this is let's say you wanna do an upgrade to your server, meaning that you need more RAM or you need more disk space or you want more compute power. What you can do is I can come to this snapshot and I can say, uh, create new instance. So I'm gonna create new instance and I can come down here and select any one of these options, okay? So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and just create another instance for this free tier. But let's assume we wanted it to be at this $20 tier where it's four gigs of RAM and two virtual private uh, or virtual CPUs and 80 gig SSD and four terabytes of transfer, right? Let's just pretend that. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one SOC2 and let's go ahead and create instance. Now what this is doing, this is building another instance within my account here. You can see it's being made right here. And it is for all intents and purposes, an exact mirror of this first one that I made, okay? But I no longer wanna use that first one because it's no longer powerful enough for me. It only has the 512 um, megabytes of RAM and it only has the 20 gigabyte SSD or I'm, I'm upgrading to this, right? So what I can do at this point in time is I can come over here and I can manage this one and I can look at my networking here and let's detach the static IP address. Now, when I detach a static IP address, I don't lose that static IP address. It's just no longer associated to the instance in which it was associated to moments ago. So let's go ahead and detach. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and disassociate that. Now I still have this IP address. If I come up over here to my main home and I look at networking, I still have this static uh, IP address for state of charge. Now what I can do now is I can go in and manage it and I can say, I no longer want it associated to that first instance. I now want to take this IP address and I want to associate it 
with the new instance, the new upgraded instance that has more RAM, more disk space, more transfers, etc. So let's go ahead and associate that to state of charge 2, which we just created, and let's attach that. So because I have the domain name attached using my own DNS, and we've just reattached this IP address to this new instance. Now when I go to that subdomain, I'm not accessing it on the old instance. I'm now accessing this on the new instance. So snapshots can be very, very powerful for you and work to your benefit. Uh, the last thing with snapshots that I think is very, very important to do, if I come over here and I manage this instance and we click on snapshots, I can come over here and I can turn on automatic snapshots. There's going to be some things that you're want, going to want to agree to and then enable. And what this is going to do is this is going to create an automatic snapshot every single day and they'll keep seven. So not only do you have a daily snapshot from the night before, but you now have a archive of seven so you can go back in time a week. Um, so if you ever need to revert to something in the past, I'm just simply going to select that snapshot once it was um, added to my, my account here and I can restore that uh, server to that snapshot at that point in time. So not only can you use it for recreating new and upgraded instances, but you can use it as a means for archival backup purposes as well. So very, very powerful tool. So this was part two in creating a WordPress instance on LightSail. In the last and final, the third part, we're gonna be talking about things like connecting to PHP MyAdmin to manage the database, logging in via SSH uh, terminal consoles that are not built into Amazon, but installed on your um, actual computer and getting a Telnet uh, prompt. And we're also be talking about how to update the Ubuntu server that is running on here uh, so that you can keep your VPS up and running and secure with the most recent um, versions of that application and server software. So stay tuned for part three. Um, again, here on State of Charge, we talk about three things, solar power, web technologies, and life stories. If these are relevant and important to you, please like and subscribe down below. Hit that bell for notifications, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.